Hi everybody and welcome to another Bowtie Teacher video. In today's video I'm going to be taking you through the Year 7 assessment coming up in February and I'm going to be taking you through all the things you need to be able to do in preparation for that test. So let's get started. So the first topic that we're going to talk about is collecting like terms. So when we're adding and subtracting terms we need to make sure that they're exactly the same before we can do that. For example, if we have 2x plus 3y, then you can't add those two together because the x and y are different. Okay. However, if we then had something like 2x plus 3y minus x plus 4y, then we can start to collect those things together because we have terms that are the same. And it's very important to understand that the signs are linked to the one in front. Okay, so the sign in front of the 3, the positive, is linked to that. And the sign in front of the x, which is a negative and is an invisible 1 here, that is linked to the x. In front of the 2 here, we have an invisible positive sign. So it's positive 2x. And then we have a positive 4y at the end. So that means we can collect those together because we have a 2x and a negative 1x. So 2x take away 1x is just 1x, which we write like that. And then we have a 3y plus a 4y to give you positive 7y. So that's how we collect together those terms there. Try another one. We have 4a plus 3b plus 2a minus b. Okay, pause the video and just try that one yourself. So in this question, we have a positive 4a and a positive 2a. So we can add those together to get positive 6a and then we have a 3b and a negative 1b so 3b take away 1b is just 2b but it's a positive 2b and that's why we have a plus sign there what about x squared plus 2x they both have an x in there don't they well the x squared and the x are actually different powers of x so this is an invisible x to the power of 1 here so we can't actually add those together so we would need to have something like 2x squared and plus 3x. And then we can start to identify which ones have the same power of x because we can then add them together. So we've got an x squared and a 2x squared there to get 3x squared. And then a 2x plus a 3x gives you 5x. Okay, so just because they've got an x in there doesn't mean you can add them together. It has to be the same power of x. How about something like this where we have x squared y plus x y plus 2x squared y plus 3x y. In this case, we're looking at all of the powers. We've got an x squared and a y to the power of 1. x to the power of 1 times y to the power of 1. We've got an x squared y to the power of 1 and x1 y1 like that. Okay, so once we start to break these powers down, we can see which one of these are the same. So we've got 2x squared plus, sorry, 2x squared y plus an x squared y is 3x squared y. And then we have an xy plus a 3xy, that's 4xy. Okay, so collecting like terms is all about identifying which one of these terms are the same. And the hardest that this would get would be something like this, a squared bc plus a b squared c plus b c a squared. Are any of these the same? Pause the video and have a look. Well, for this question, we have an x a squared, a b to the power of 1, c to the power of 1, a to the power of 1, b squared, and a c to the power of 1, and then b to the power of 1, c to the power of 1, a squared. So even though these are in different orders, because they're multiples of each other, so a squared, this is a times a times b times c. This is a times b times b times c. And this is b times c times a times a. And you'll notice that when you multiply numbers together, like 3 times 4 times 5 is the same as 5 times 4 times 3 or any other combination that you want to use of those three numbers. So this one here, where it's got an a times a times b times c, and this one here, a times a times b times c, they're the exact same thing. So we actually have 2a squared bc plus ab squared 
see like that. Okay, so a bit confusing because they're in a, di a different order, but if you write them out in full like this, if you're not sure, that will help you to identify those terms that you can add together and those that you can't. The biggest issue that we see in tests is students do something like this, 3x plus 4, and then they do 7x, which is not the case, okay, because 3x plus 4 is finished. You can't actually add those two together unless there was an x after the 4, and then that would be equal to 7x. So don't make that mistake where you're trying to collect terms that aren't the same. The next topic that we have to talk about is expanding brackets. So what happens here is when we have a bracket like this, two brackets x plus 3, then we multiply everything inside by what's in front. So we're going to do 2 times x, which is 2x, and then 2 times positive 3. This is actually a, an invisible plus sign here. So plus 2 times plus 3 is plus 6. Okay. If we have 3 brackets 2x plus 4, then we would do 3 lots of 2x. Positive 3 times positive 2x is positive 6x. And positive 3 times positive 4 is positive 12. If we have a negative sign in front, like negative 2 times x plus 3, then we would do negative 2 times positive x which is negative 2x, and negative 2 times positive 3, negative 6. Okay, so be careful when you have a negative sign in front, especially if you have something like negative 3 brackets x minus 5. Because what students do is they do the negative 3 times the x, but they don't do the negative 3 times the negative 5 to give you positive 15. That's one of the mistakes that a lot of students make when there's a negative sign in front. And what about if we just have a negative with nothing else? What do you think happens here? Well, the negative would have an invisible 1 here. So we're doing negative 1 times positive x, which is negative x. And then negative 1 times positive 2 is negative 2, like that. So if you have a negative in front of a bracket, what that does is it changes the sign of everything inside it. So this positive become a negative, and this positive become a negative here. We sometimes have to also expand algebraically like this. Some things that have terms of x in. So x times x like this. x times x is x squared. And x positive x times positive 3 is positive 3x like that. So the main thing I want you to take away from this is obviously the multiplying of everything inside the brackets, but also to perhaps put the signs in if you're not sure, just to keep you on the right path, because sometimes students will have a negative 2 and x minus 5 like that, and they're just doing negative 2 minus 5 or something like that, and they get minus 7. Okay, that's not correct because you should be multiplying everything here and not adding them together or subtracting them. The third topic we have to do for this assessment is solving equations. So to solve equations, what we're essentially doing is trying to find what x equals, some number that x will be equal to. So whenever you see the word solve in, an, in a question, you're expected to do x equals. Now, it's not always x. Sometimes it's a different letter, but most of the time it's going to be x. So let's start with some simple ones, like x plus 1 equals 5. Okay? What we do is we do the reverse of this. So if you think of a number and add 1 and you get 5, to reverse it, you would take your number 5 and do the reverse of plus 1, which is minus 1. So we subtract 1 from both sides, and then what you get is x plus 1 minus 1 is 0, and then we have equals 5 minus 4. Okay? We'll build this up to doing something like 2x plus 1 equals 13. What we would do here is we would take our unknown number x, we would multiply it by 2, and add 1 to get 13. So we're going to do the opposite of that, which is 13 take away 1, because the opposite of plus 1 is take away 1, to get 2x equals 13 take away 1. And then the opposite of multiplying by 2 would be divide by 2. So we're going to divide both sides by 2 like this, 
the 2's cancel and we're left with x equals 12 over 2 is 6. And whenever you get these answers, like x equals 4, x equals 6, you should take the time to put the 6 back into the equation. We're going to do substitution in a moment, but if x equals 6, 2 times x would be 2 times 6. Plus 1 does indeed give us 13. So we have 13 on the left-hand side and 13 on the right, so we know that that answer is correct. Okay, let's do 4x take away 1 is equal to 15. We're going to do the opposite of take away 1 plus 1 to both sides to get 4x equals 16. And then the opposite of times 4 to x is divide 4. So we get x equals 16 divided by 4 is 4. Okay, substitute that in 4 lots of x, 4 times 4 minus 1 is 15. Okay, if we got the wrong answer here, let's say we've got a 5, then the left hand side wouldn't equal 15, it would be a different number, and we know we've gone wrong. Okay, so try to substitute in for every answer. When you see in a solve question, try and substitute in every time. Students often ask, which order do we do these operations? Why did we do the minus 1 first and not the divide by 2? Well, if we usually have bit mass when we're doing these questions, like 4 times 2 plus 1, like that, when we're solving an equation, we actually do the reverse process, or like I've been talking about. So we reverse the order of bid mass, SAMDIB. So in this example, in question 2, then we were looking at, we have a multiply 2 here and a plus 1 here, which when we look at SAMDIB, we have the addition and the multiply. So I dealt with the addition first, the plus 1, before I dealt with the multiply. Okay, there are some exceptions to this rule, but if you learn this process, then that will guide you through the vast majority of these questions. In question 3, we had a times 4 and a negative 1, so we had subtraction and multiplying. So I did the subtraction first and dealt with that before I dealt with the multiply. So the next question, we're going to use SAMDIB in a slightly more complicated way. We've got 3x squared plus 1 equals 13. So just try to identify from SAMDIB what we actually have first before we try this question. Okay, so we have a times 3 here, we have an x squared here, and we have a plus 1. So we have the plus 1 is the add, the times 3 is the multiply, and the squared is going to be the indices from this. So that's the order in which I'm going to try and attack this question. So to get rid of the plus 1, I'm going to minus 1 from both sides to get 3x squared equals 13 take away 1. That's dealt with the addition. Now to deal with the multiply, we divide by 3 for both sides to get x squared equals 12 over 3 is 4. And then I have to deal with the indices. So the opposite of squared is to do the square root of both sides. Okay. So we're going to square root both sides. So the square root of x squared just takes us back to x. And the square root of 4 is 2. We're just going to leave it as 2 for now. Okay. So x equals 2 is our solution to this equation. If you substitute this back into your equation here, we're going to do x squared first because we're doing bid mass now because we're going the other way. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 plus 1. That gives us 13. Our final topic is substitution. So if we have an, uh, an expression or an equation, we can substitute in numbers into the place of letters. Okay, so just like in a football game, we're going to substitute players for players, we're going to substitute numbers for letters. So if we have something like v equals u plus at, and in the question it says that u equals 2, a equals 3, and t equals 4. What that means is we're going to substitute or swap the numbers for the letters here. So V is equal to U plus AT means A times T. So 3 for A times T is 4. So from bid mass, we're going to do V equals 2 plus 3 times 4, which is 12. And that gives us 14. Okay. So we're substituting numbers for letters here. 
let's use the same equation and this time we're going to make u equal 4, a equals 5 and t equals 6. So see if you can pause the video and substitute these numbers in for v equals u plus at. Okay, I hope you had a chance to do that. So v equals u plus a times t. Okay, 4 plus 5 times 6 is 30, so v equals 34, like that. I hope you got that correct. Let's try another one. S equals u plus 8a. So in this case, I want us to do u equals 2 and a equals 3. Give that a try. So s equals u plus 8 lots of a. So 8 times 3. s is going to be equal to 2 plus 8 times 3. 8 times 3 is 24. So 2 plus 24 is 26, like that. Okay. Sometimes we might get um, an equation like v equals u plus at, and they ask us, what is u when v equals 26, a equals 4, and t equals 6, like that. So this time, we're not actually looking for v, we're looking for u. So we have to substitute these in and then rearrange to try and find the answer. So I'll give you an example of that here. v equals 26. u, we don't know. A is 4 and T is 6. So 26 equals U plus 24, 4 times 6. I'm going to take 24 from both sides like this. And I get 26 take away 24 is 2 equals U. Okay, and it doesn't matter if it's that way around or U equals 2 like that. So we've actually rearranged this formula to try and find the, the unknown term, which isn't always the one in front of the equal sign like that. Okay, sometimes it gets a little bit more complicated. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a couple of pages of different questions for you to try. I want you to have a go at them, pause the video, have a go at them, and then once you've finished, you can watch the rest of the video and see if you got them correct. So the first page is for collecting like terms. The second page is for expanding brackets. The third page is for solving equations, and the last page is for substitution. So I'm going to go through all of these now and make sure that you can do all of these and give you some hints and tips along the way. Okay, so make sure you've done all four of these pages before you move on to the next part of the video. Okay, for this question we have 4x plus 3x which gives you 7x and 2y plus 6y to give you plus 8y. 4a negative 2a, so 4a minus 2a is going to be 2a, and 3b minus 1b is positive 2b, like that. Question 3, we have 5x plus x to give you positive 6x, and negative 2y minus another 3y is negative 5y. a, b, b, c, and a, c, none of these are the same, but a, b, and b, a are because the a times b is the same as b times a. So we have an ab plus another ab is 2ab plus bc plus ac, like that. The last one, we have p squared q to the power of 1, q to the power of 1 p squared, so these two are the same. p squared q to the power of 1, so this is the same. And p to the power of 1 q squared, that's actually different. So the first three are the same term, and the last one is different. So we have p squared q plus another p squared q plus 2p squared q is 4p squared q, because we've got two there, one here, and one here. And then finally, we have a p q squared, which is this one here, left over by itself. On the second page, we're multiplying out brackets. So we've got two lots of x plus two lots of 4, 3a plus 3 lots of 7. We have a negative 2 times x, so that's negative 2x, and then negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 
6, like that. x times 2x, so that's 2 times x times x is 2 lots of x squared. And then x times positive 4 is positive 4x. a times a is a squared, and a times positive b is positive ab. And then 2a times a squared is going to be 2 times a times a squared, which is a cubed. And then we have 2a times positive 3b, so we're going to do 2 times 3, which is positive 6. a times b is just ab, like that. For the third page, we're solving equations. We have a plus 7. We're going to take a 7 from both sides to give you x equals 3. Here we have a times 2 and a plus 7, so we're going to do the minus 7 first. That's going to give us 2x equals 17, take away 7. And then we have the times 2, so we're going to do the opposite of that, which is divide 2. And that will give us x equals 10 over 2, which is 5. I'm going to substitute these back in. 5 times 2, so 2 times 5 plus 7. Yes, that does give us 17. Here. We have a plus 7 to get rid of the negative 7 here. So that gives us 3x equals 21. Divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals 21 over 3, which is 7. So 3 times 7 here, 3 times 7 is 21, minus 7 is 14. Here we have an x on both sides, so we have to deal with that first before we can do anything else. My advice is to take the x across to the side which has the biggest x on it. So we have an equal sign here, and on the left we have a 3x, and on the right just the 1x. So I'm going to take this x over the other side by subtracting x from both sides. Okay, That will get rid of the x on this side. So x take away x on this side, that becomes 0. And 3x take away 2x is... Sorry, 3x take away 1x is 2x. So we still have the minus 7 and the plus 3 on this side. So we need to remove the minus 7 on this side because we've got the 2x and it's bound to this minus 7 at the moment. So we're going to add 7 to both sides and we get 2x, the minus 7 and the plus 7 cancel. And we have on the right side, we have 3 plus 7, which is 10. We're going to divide both sides by 2 and we get x equals 5. So we can just check that because we've got 3x, so 3 lots of 5 is 15, take away 7, that's 8. And then on the right hand side we have x plus 3, 5 plus 3 is also 8. So the left hand side and right hand side balance. If we have a bracket then we have to solve, we have to remove the brackets by expanding. So we're using our uh, last page here to help us out. 2 lots of x. 2 times x, 2 times 3 gives you positive 6 equals 10. So now we've done that stage, we can just do our normal solving by subtracting 6, 2x equals 4, and then divide by 2, divide by 2, we get x equals 2. You can check that, substitute into the brackets, 2 plus 3 is 5, and then we do 2 lots of 5 is 10. The last question, we've got times 4, a squared, and a plus 3. So samdib, we're going to do the plus, then we're going to do the times, and then we're going to do the power. So subtract 3 from both sides. We get 4x squared equals 16. We're going to then divide by 4 on both sides to get x squared equals 16 over 4. And then we're going to square root both sides to get x equals 2. So substitute that in, we've got 4 times x squared plus 3. So we do the bracket, uh, the indices first, which is 2 squared. Then we do the times 4, then we do the plus 3. So 4 times 4 is 16 plus 3. That does give us 19, which is what we wanted here. And the last page is substitution. We want v when i is 2 and r is 3. So 2 IR means I times R, so we're going to get V equals 6. Question 2, V is equal to U plus 85 times 10. 
So V equals 5 times 10 is 50 plus 2 gives us 52. Here we have S equals a half of brackets U plus V. Okay, so we're going to do the brackets first, 2 plus 4. So S equals a half of 2 plus 4, which is 6. So S equals a half of 6, which is 3. Question 4, Y equals MX, so 2 times X, which was 3, plus 1 for C. So Y equals 2 times 3, which is 6, plus 1 is 7. Question 5, we have S equals UT, so S equals U, 0 times T, so 0 times 2, plus a half A, which is half times A, 9.8, times T squared, 2 squared, like that. So S is equal to 0 times 2, that's just 0, plus a half of 9.8, which is 4.9, times 2 squared, so that's 4. So our final answer is 4.9 times 4, which is 19.6. For the last one, V, we have 26 equals U plus A times T. So T is 3, 3 times A. So I'm doing 3 times A instead of A times 3. It doesn't matter which way around you do that, but we should write the number first. So if I just rewrite that as 26 equals 2 plus 3A, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. We get 24 equals 3A divide both sides by 3 and we get a equals 8 okay so some tricky questions there but hopefully you followed my my walkthrough and understood how I did all of these if you have any questions then you can email me at school or you can put something in the comments below and I'll get back to you good luck in your assessment